This episode of Shadows Cast, our fifth, will be a little shorter than the last one, which did stretch on for quite a bit longer than I had expected. In this episode, we'll look at more ideas about gaming in Korea. Also, we'll take a brief diversion into asking you a question about your reaction to the new Marvel superhero play, role-playing game. And of course, I'll throw in some of my thoughts on that too. Well, the first segment, a little bit about All for One. Now, any, anybody who's gone to my blog knows that I'm a huge, huge fan of this game. Uh, it's the game right now for, for me, as far as I'm concerned. And I found out recently that there will be a decrease in support for the game um, starting this year. Triple uh, Ace Games will still be producing uh, adventures, but they will, as of May, finish producing the monthly Richelieu's Guides. Um, and that's, uh, that's a little sad. Not disappointing, they've produced a lot of them, more than 300 pages worth of, of uh, setting expansion material uh, at the rate of, of one per month uh, since the game launched, so there really is nothing to complain about. It's just sad that uh, that Wiggy, the author, uh, won't be chained to his, to his word processor any longer in service to the crown. So a uh, tip of the hat for uh, a truly amazing run of really excellent products from start to finish, and like I said, the, the game line will be continuing, um, but uh, we will no longer be treated to a new little bit of, of all-for-one Regime Diabolique uh, each month. For this episode of Shadows Cast, I'm on a corporate retreat uh, at a ski resort in the mountains. And uh, I realized that we should have a segment about gaming in Korea that talks about mountains because literally mountains are everywhere. More than 90% of the country is considered to be mountainous. And uh, so don't let the school, the, the ski resort, fool you. Uh, this ski resort combines two, two very Korean elements. One, mountains. And two, the attempt to bring a European sensibility to something that they think other people will like. Um, so if you have uh, a spy game or a, some kind of heroic action game that will involve resorts or, or um, hotels or some kind of spa, that sort of thing, uh, chances are, for that right taste of authenticity, you will want to have it uh, not seem very Asian. In fact, making it as European as possible. So just looking around behind me, we've got the, the fast food restaurant, and uh, and all the amenities are here. Coffee shops, pizza parlors, um, but uh, as you can see, we've got a real old world <laughs> sensibility going on. Uh, and for skiing, well, you know, it's just after 7 in the morning and there really isn't anybody on the hill. But at the same time, it's Thursday. So why would there be? But there are some hardy souls. So, mountainous. Wherever you go, in just about every city, port cities included, anywhere you go in a town, you're going uphill. Both ways. And... It's uh, it's hard to describe for someone who hasn't grown up in this kind of environment. Uh, it's not hills, it's mountains. And when you're standing on a street, often you can't see very far because of the elevation at the other end of the street. When you can, of course, your view is blocked by high-rise apartments, uh, higher mountains, that sort of thing. So even though I'm basically near the top of a mountain, of course, I'm in this little cup of, uh, of livable land uh, in the midst of the mountains, wreathed in fog, and uh, 
and that really is the Korean experience. So, with that in mind, car chases, foot chases, and uh, anything involving short-term transportation involves a lot of changing elevation, exhaustion, fatigue, uh, incredibly steep hills, narrow, winding streets, uh, and a point that I really want to get to is a real lack of predictable right angles and the ability to check your compass points. So often when new people come to the country, they quite easily get lost. Not because they have no sense of direction, but because they have grown up evaluating terrain in a completely different way. Particularly urban terrain, the way streets are laid out. Usually in a city, streets are not laid out in a grid shape. The arrangement of streets has more to do with the underlying terrain than anything else. So, when you go around a corner, you expect to be going 90 degrees. You're not even really thinking about it, but you could, <laughs> you know, really be walking directly backward in the same direction that you were and wind up in a part of town uh, that you weren't expecting. Also very useful for chases, following directions, and the like. And this is the last point, following directions. Even though the government has worked very, very hard to mandate a Western-style street name and number system, nobody wants to use it. In fact, they're having to resort to more punitive measures to get people to even recognize the fact that these new addresses exist. Uh, the post office simply works by numbering all the buildings. So you live in a certain area of town. This is codified and named. But all the streets within it uh, are unnamed, or have been unnamed. It's the buildings and the blocks that they're on that are numbered. So people navigate you know, much the same as a taxi driver does by counting up or counting down in an area, except that they're really, or they're rarely, uh, is a completely logical sequence to the uh, to the numbering on the buildings. So it's not always predictable. And you can see the, the delivery drivers on their little scooters uh, often getting lost. So um, how do people navigate? They navigate by landmarks and famous buildings. Take me near this place and once we get there I'll tell you where we're going. Um, which as a using Korean as a, as a second or third language can sometimes be complicated. Again, throwing another interesting and uh, scenically appropriate hook into your game. The wind is picking up. I'm going back inside. A lot of people are talking about the new Marvel superhero game from MWP. And I wasn't really sure if I wanted to be one of them. And I've started a couple of blog entries on it, but I've decided just to include it here in the Shadows cast, uh, so that basically no one will see it. <laughs> I don't get marketing a game, a role-playing game, targeted at playing other people's characters. Uh, it just, it has no allure to me, and I really don't have any re recollection of playing with anybody for whom that kind of setup would have allure. I mean, back when we were playing DC Heroes or the early versions of, of Marvel, we made our own characters. Any other superhero game that's come down the pike from Champions through Aberrant, we made our own characters. I just don't see why I would spend any time in a role-playing situation. See, not role-playing Spider-Man, but pretending to be Spider-Man. The, the difference is significant. Um, I don't think I'm the only one. What do you think? Is that strange? This segment could be, I guess, subtitled, Forcing the Issue. And what I mean by that is, this segment we're going to be talking about um, the idea of heavily scripting or, or pre-planning a story to the point where you have set pieces of adventure where you have a clear beginning, middle, and end that you're going to guide the players through. They're going to uncover your story tale uh, step by step, layer by layer, until you come to the grand conclusion that you had planned from the beginning. Uh, 
and I guess why I call it forcing the issue is forcing the issue of, of uh, what will happen, what should happen, and what can happen, and what you've planned to have happen. The art of that versus the pure enjoyment of setting the stage and seeing what happens. Now you can already tell by the way I phrase that that I'm coming down pretty heavily on one side of that issue. And it's true. I truly believe that uh, my players and I have a much better time when I don't try and ran them, run them through some grand campaign. But as you can see on my blog, we've got long running campaigns all the time. Are they scripted out? No, they're discovered in play. The characters are created, situations are created, events are put in motion, and then we both, on both sides of the screen, discover what's going to happen. I'm a referee for the universe. If it's Call of Cthulhu, the universe hates you. Or maybe is so uh, ambivalent about your existence that it doesn't even recognize that you exist, which for many people works out to be exactly the same thing. If it's if it's Battletech, I'm gravity and fire and bad breath. If it's vampire, it might be a little bit of both. Uh, but the point is that uh, I think you can tell stories, to steal a phrase, without telling a story. It doesn't have to be the, the Game Master's artistic rendition of of a, a fantasy arc or a heroic pulp arc, you can go the other route, what often gets called a sandbox. You can create uh, environments and situations. You can put things in motion and then let them be in motion, adjudicating what will or won't happen based on what the players do and, and what people would actually do in that situation without planning it out so that it becomes uh, scripted fiction. And we're not talking about railroading. We're talking about two different ways to play. One, where you set out to give your players an experience that you plan versus setting out to give your players an experience that you don't plan. I do not see one of these as requiring more or less skill than the other or more uh, or less art than the other. But I do see them as involving uh, completely different focuses and that leads to maybe one of them being more fun for a certain group of players than the other. Okay? So that's another way to say there's no wrong way to play, but it's also a way to say there are other ways to play. One way is not inherently better than the other. But for your group, one of the ways will be inherently better than the other. There's nothing wrong with accepting that. We like to play a certain way. So I know from personal experience that my groups have much more fun, and I certainly have much more fun, when we approach it from the point of view that the the world is real. All right, so it's a it's a simulation of realistic. You can use quotes if you like realistic reactions to what is happening, and what is happening is a synergistic effect between what the players are doing, what the NPCs should be doing, and therefore I'm having them do, and what the overall point of the game was to begin with. There doesn't have to be a pre-planned overarching plot to take the characters through stages of development. They're going to develop on their own because of what happened to them. They're going to be built by the, the memories of, of play that we have. Now you can do that same story and plan it out from the beginning. And your players, if they like that sort of thing, will have just as much fun. I really haven't had players like that for a very long time. And so I don't play that way. How do you play? Share in the comments. Another element of conducting a game set in Korea is religion. There are a number of major religions present, um, and the number is growing rather than decreasing, like you'd expect in a Western country. Okay. Now, for most games, I suppose, this doesn't have a lot of impact unless it's just a part of the, the detail that you include in your character descriptions for NPCs and the like. But in a 
games such as the World of Darkness, particularly Vampire or Wraith, let's say, it can make for interesting setting material. One of the one of the biggest elements, uh, if I turn about here, uh, will speak for itself. Giant red neon crosses. And not just one every now and again. A lot. I'm just standing outside my apartment. Alright? So as I flip the camera over, we can see how many? We can see one giant red neon cross over there, which has two next to it that you can't see behind the building. Then two more, two different churches, two different denominations. And then I'm not sure if it comes out, there's one in the distance over there. You know, for a grand total of counting them up just as I stand here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that I can see just standing here. And there are more in the area, of course. So, if you have your uh, character arriving from the godless west, <laughs> they can suddenly feel like they're living in the middle of the Inquisition. So let's count, shall we? That's two different churches, side by side. Uh, you can't see it through all the distortion light, but there's another one at the end of the street at the corner. Just, un just between the two buildings, there's another, and another, and another, and I'm not sure if it'll come out, but the purple line hanging in the sky, that's another. And another. I'm standing on a bridge not far from my apartment, and, well, there you go. Lots of blood-red neon cross.